What's up guys? This is Dwight back with another video coming to you. It's a little bit different today. It has rained and it's just sloppy out here. So I get questions all the time about how much is my timber worth? And today, if you're wondering about how much timber's worth or how much it's gonna bring you, stay tuned because I'm gonna tell you how much it pays you to turn your timberland into this. All right, guys, so the question, what is my timber worth? Okay, well, that's, a, that's a pretty complex question because unfortunately it doesn't work like that. So what is timber worth is subjective to several factors, okay? Number one, type of tree we're talking about. Number two, terrain, how rough the country is. Three, access. And four, distance from the mill because the farther away it is, the more trucking's going. So just to give a disclaimer, okay, our timber contracts between us and landowners are 100% between us and the landowner. We don't tell nobody how much we're paying for timber. If the landowner wants to tell everybody, that's great. But when we come to your property and we give you a quote on the timber, we're not telling anybody how much we offer for it. Number one, because if we happen to tell someone, then, you know, they could run their mouth and target you for some money. This video is our timber, okay? We own the timber, own the land. This is our timber. All right, guys, we're sitting here on a beautiful wide oak flat. Now this piece of ground here has been managed for quality timber intensely for years and years and years. So realistically, you're probably not gonna have this type of timber. If you have this type of timber and you wanna sell it, please get a hold of me because I would love to come cut it. Anyway, so we're starting with the highest value tree that we have in this part of the world. And that is good old fashioned stave quality wide oak now people are like well i've got walnut okay well walnut in this part of the world is usually not very good and it's usually pretty cheap so it's usually cut in walnut is sold in different grades veneer and saw logs and saw logs are drastically cheaper dollar dollar 25 so at the mill so as landowner you're looking at getting less than that so Walnut's not really valuable. I personally don't really cut walnut. Anyway, but your most valued tree in this part of the country is stave grade wide oak. So right here is a prime example of a good old stave grade wide oak. We try to keep the diameter breast height 16 inches and above. Now, six inches above gives the best management for the forest and gives you the best check so you're gonna have loggers come in here and they're gonna cut this tree right here okay just because they think they can get money out of it and it's going to destroy your timber stand that is your principle that right there that's your investment. In 15 years, that is gonna turn into this. White oak staves, last time I checked, they were bringing $1.79 a board foot at the mill. Now stumpage is, stumpage is what the landowner gets paid. And it varies from contract to contract, like I said, depending on a whole bunch of things, but usually the going rate on white oak staves is 50% landowner pays shipping. Shipping can be is usually right around four hundred dollars a load. One, this tree right here is going to be cut at twenty-one foot, and it's going to have approximately a hundred board foot in the log. So, about forty trees per load. Up to uh, the landowner, if you could get seventy dollars a tree, or you know about seventy cents a board foot. That'd be a pretty good deal. So in the same tract of timber here, we have what the bulk of your timber is gonna be. So for instance, it takes 40 white oak 
trees to make a tractor trailer load. You're not gonna have very many tractor trailer loads of good fat, good old fashioned stave trees. I'm talking good quality stave trees. You're not gonna have that many. So the bulk of your timber harvest is gonna be right here. This is a red oak. Red oak is drastically cheaper uh, because it is uh, symbolic of the 90s and no one wants to do their house in red oak anymore. Don't know why. I guarantee you if I put them side by the lumber side by side, you wouldn't know the difference. But anyway, that's the way it is and that's the way the market is. Unfortunately, we're a commodity based system, which is great in some cases. In some cases, like red oak, it's not great. So red oak is, only thing it's good for right now is ties because the lumber ain't worth crap. So stumpage on ties, again, is gonna, uh, it's gonna differ greatly from contract to contract, logging crew to logging crew. They keep their stumpage quiet. There's a, but I would say you're looking at uh, anywhere from, 20 cents a board foot, 15, 20 cents a board foot in that area for stumpage. Or $20 a ton. Most of your tie logs around here are sold by ton. So anyway, so the red oak is not strong. You can sell lumber for a little bit, uh, but the sawmill really doesn't like it because lumber right now ain't worth crap. Ties are terrifying any day now they could shut the tile market down in general it's just a bad time being the sawmill all right guys i'm standing right here in front of a gum tree sweet gum sweet gum lumber is good for one thing and one thing only and that's pallet material but it makes a dang good tie and as long as they buy ties i will buy sweet gum all day sweet gum runs through the saw fantastic quick easy to cut a tie out of and it makes a good tie however I'm not going to pay the same price for this sweet gum as I am the white oak. I'm sorry, it's just the lumber is worthless. All right, guys, so if you're anywhere in the south of the United States, you know what I'm standing in. I'm standing in a pine thicket, all right? This is improved short leaf pine. It was planted in the 80s into the 90s. Everyone back then was planting pine. It was gonna be the, the big thing, all right? Well, guess what happened? The market, everyone planted pine. Everyone started cutting pine. The market absolutely flooded. Pine is extremely volatile, price-wise. Last time I checked for just regular saw logs, you're talking like $14 a ton at the mill. I don't cut pine, I don't buy pine. Until uh, until they bring the pine tie back, I won't be buying any pine because it's just not worth it. And most sawmills are the same way. Like I said, you could sell it, you, you could have it cut. But one thing about pine is the destination for pine is in South Arkansas. It takes all day to truck it there. So the trucking cost is huge. In order to do it efficiently, you have to have a lot of high dollar equipment. So the cost for the logger is huge. So you as a landowner are not going to get much out of your pine. If you just need it gone, people call me all the time. They say, I want this pine gone. I want to turn it into a field. And I say, hey, I don't buy pine right now. I'll give you some phone numbers of people who do buy pine. But if you can just wait, the market will come back up eventually and you'll make more money. But unfortunately right now, pine is in the toilet. It ain't worth crap. All right guys, like I said, just a quick little video to kind of help y'all understand what it takes to have a good timber sale. Remember, white oak, you're looking at 16 inches diamond breast height bigger. And for tie logs, it really needs to be around that 14 to 16 inch or bigger mark. Because, uh, you know, a log on the little end that's under 12 inches won't hardly make a tie. Always get more than one quote. Try to get as many quotes as you possibly can. Beware of people who show up 
and they are just so far you know like someone comes up to you and, and, and i've offered you i've offered you 45 percent of the of the total revenue for the timber job and someone shows up and they offer you uh 50 and someone's gonna show up and they'll offer, they may offer you 25 someone may show offer you 30 and you got one guy who's like i'll give you 70 percent all right well that's the same thing as getting the lowest bidder bidder to build you a house they're gonna ha it costs money it costs a lot of money to cut timber and someone who is offering 70 percent on a job that and you know it's not really just some phenomenal timber they're gonna get that money somewhere they're probably gonna pay you 70 percent of the stuff they tell you about they're gonna steal the rest remember guys not all loggers are bad there are some great loggers and the great ones always have great reputations so if you get a bad logger all you gotta do is ask around and uh ask for people for a list of people that they've cut on and ask call that number talk to them because i promise you they'll let you know how they are a good logger will always have good reviews and a bad logger will always have bad reviews a good logger will make you more money because you know the good logger may only give you 30 percent but in 10 years he's going to come back and you're going to get another 30 percent and then 10 years after that you're going to get another 30 percent because he's going to manage the forest and cut it to where it needs to be cut and provide a long-term sustainable income for you and your family and him and his family the logger who's flying by night he's flying by see his pants he's going to show up he's going to tell you he'll give you 70 percent he's going to get the job he's going to pay you for two loads steal 10 and you're never going to see him again and all you're left with is junk now instead of waiting 10 years to harvest your timber again now you've got to wait a uh, hundred years 50 years it may never be right again so always get multiple bids always get multiple reviews on your logging crew i'm out i gotta go make some stacking strips and uh, i hope you'll have a good day